Now, what I want to talk about today is the difference between a 117 Stage 1 on the 2021 Street Glide CVO or a 114 Stage 2 that I've recently put on the 2021 Road Glide Special. Guys, my name is Rick and this is the HD Vibe channel. And so I'm going to explore a little bit with you about what the differences are, at least from my perspective on a 117 versus a 114, and ultimately, why did I decide to go to a stage two on the Road Glide Special, and what cam did I actually go with and compare some of the numbers in terms of torque and horsepower between a 117 stage one and a 114 stage two. And we'll get into all that right after this. That's right guys, today we're gonna to be exploring um, the differences between a 117 stage one and a 114 stage two. I'm fortunate I've been able to ride both of these bikes. I've had this one since June of 2022. I've had this one since April of 2022. So I have a lot of seat time and a lot of miles under my belt that I can kind of tell you the differences between. And we'll also go back into the studio in the garage and talk about what do the numbers look like? So first off, um, you might be saying, well, Rick, I didn't realize you had a cam or a stage two done on the 2021 Road Glide Special. And you're right, I haven't revealed that in any of the past videos. I just did that in the last two weeks. And I will tell you, it's one of those things that I wasn't really ever really too excited about doing. Um, but I'm gonna give you my thoughts on that. One of the things that drove me to that was um, the 117. Um, I guess you could say it spoiled me um, in some respects, but this has the Screaming Eagle 432 cam, which is a performance torque cam that comes stock on the CVO and I think all of the 117s, you know, on the STs. Um, this, I believe the stock cam, I think it's a 335. Um, so there was a big difference, honestly, between the 114 and the 117. Um, you know, snappier response from the throttle on the 117 versus the 114. Um, you know, when I was in higher gears on the highway, I didn't have to downshift um, to get out of the way of traffic or a truck or a pass um, versus I had to do that on the 114 when I just had the stock cam in it. So that's what really led me to going with uh, a stage two on the Road Glide Special. So now when it comes to cams, we all know there's so many. There's SNS, there's Woods, um, there's Redshift, there's a gamut, and then there's Screaming Eagle. So I actually went with the Screaming Eagle Torque Cam, which is the SE8 447. Um, there's a kit where you get the adjustable push rods in the cam. And I'll have links and the, the pricing in the description of all that. Um, and if you have a 2020 or newer, you could probably get away with just putting the cam and the adjustable push rods in. Um, and if you have it done at your dealership, um, that'll obviously be you know, under warranty. Um, and if you use a Screaming Eagle tuner, which is what I use on this, um, it's all under warranty. Now, I went a little farther um, with that, I actually put in the, I think it's the Screaming Eagle Pro, I'm not exactly sure of the name, um, cam plate, as well as the Pro Oil Pump. It's a kit, and I'll have a link to that as well. And, you know, if you have a 2020 or newer, they changed that oil pump and that cam plate, so I didn't necessarily really need to do that, but at the end of the day, um, I talked with the master tech that was gonna be doing the work on the bike, and we together decided that might be the best way to go. We also put the um, new tappets in um, and change those out from stock as well as the cam bearing. So it's all Screaming Eagle. I use the Screaming Eagle Pro Street Tuner, I believe. And again, I'll have links to all that down in the description. So um, my experience after running this for a while and comparing to this, I'm gonna tell you, I actually like riding the 114 better now that it has this S, the Screaming Eagle 447 cam in it compared to the 432 cam 
um, that's in the 117. So now my debate is, do I then put a 447 in the 117 and go to a stage two? I could do that, um, and it's really not all that expensive. Now, one of the reasons I went with putting the cam plate, the new cam bearing, the tappets, all of that, the labor was no difference um, in doing that all on the 114. So, you know, would I have to do that and add those extra parts on the 117? Probably not. And that might be a consideration for you guys as you're kind of debating on this. So, you know, why didn't I go with an SNS? Everybody, a lot of people go with the SNS. Um, one, I wanted to keep my bike under warranty. Um, the work was all done by uh, Harley Davidson master technician um, with Harley Davidson parts. So that for me, that was important. Um, I also didn't want to get too aggressive with the cam. Uh, an SNS 475 is awesome, and you're going to get probably more horsepower out of the, the cam or out of the engine than you would with the Screaming Eagle. Uh, but um, I have a friend who actually put a SNS 475 in. Um, he doesn't really like it because it's so loud. Um, and also his gas mileage um, suffered tremendously when he put the 475 cam in. So, you know, for me, that was a consideration. I didn't want something that was super loud, although you do still get a little bit of lope with that cam. It's not a really high lift cam, but it, you do get lope. And it actually, to me, again, sounds better than the 117. So um, I'm going to do a quick startup of these two, and then we're going to go back in the garage and we'll talk some horsepower and torque numbers comparing the 117 stage one to a 114 stage two. Okay guys, so I hope you were able to hear a little bit of the differences in the starts and from a cold perspective. You really hear the difference between the 117 stage one um, and the 114 stage two at idle. You really, with the stage two and the 447 cam and the 114, you get that kind of lope. It sounds like a Harley, you get just a little bit of that, that thump and you get a little bit more vibration uh, closer to what the twin cams did. When I had my 2015 uh, Street Glide Special, you kind of felt that that little vibration, that, that rumble, um, and you do hear that with that. So let's just do some, let's get to the numbers on this now. So um, I went through, and this is just base numbers. I've not had either one of these bikes dyno tuned. This is information from Harley Davidson using Harley Davidson parts and Harley Davidson tuners. So the Pro Street tuner. So the 117 um, stock has about 92 horsepower, and that comes on at 4,500 RPMs. Um, the torque on the 117, again, stock, is about 112 foot pounds, and that comes on in that 3,500 range. So this has a stage one. They don't have information for that, but I'm guessing horsepower wise with the stage one, and I have Reinhardt DBX 45s. Again, I have the same exhaust on both of these bikes and stock headers, just remember that. Um, I would say the horsepower on this is probably in the 95 to maybe getting up to 100 uh, with the stage one, and the torque, I'm going to guess is in that is in that 115 ish range, maybe 120 uh, foot pounds. Again, at that 3500, that's where it really comes on. And again, that's a 432 performance cam that is stock on the CVO 117. I believe it's the same cam that they put into the ST models. So let's talk numbers on the 114. Now this is stock again. 
Horsepower, we're probably in the 85 to 86 range at 4,500 RPM. And that compares again to the 117 stock 92-ish at 4,500 RPMs. Then let's go down to torque. So torque on the 114 stock is about 100 foot-pounds at 3,500 RPMs. On, again, on the 117, you're at about 112. So about 10 to 12% differential, probably in both horsepower as well as torque from the 117 to the 114. So when this was stocked, that's why I felt a huge difference between the 117 and the 114. Um, I was always looking for more out of the 114 after I had gotten rid, after I had just ridden the 117. So now let's talk about the 114 with the stage two. Again, this is the 447 cam. This is um, the Pro Street Tuner um, from Harley Davidson. So a stock canned map that we put into the ECM. So horsepower, um, 100. So we got a good jump horsepower from about 85 um, all the way up to 100. So that's, you know, whatever, 12%-ish at 5,000 RPM. So it, it comes on a little bit higher in the RPM range, that, that peak horsepower. And then torque, torque went from 100 at 3,500 RPMs with the cam, we're at 120 foot-pounds at 3,500. So about 20% increase in that. So the long and short of it is now the numbers, again, 100 horsepower with the Stage 2 cam at 5,000, 120 foot-pounds at 3,500 versus now a Stage 1 on the 117, I'm probably at 95 horsepower. So I got more horsepower with the Stage 2 and torque is 115 at 3,500 on the 117, and torque on the 114 now is 120. So I have more horsepower on the stage two and more torque on the stage two as well. And I will tell you from my butt dyno, I feel that differential now. Um, and what it has done for me is actually made me really sort of lean towards wanting to ride the Rogue Glide Special with the 114 more than the 117. So now I have a dilemma. Do I put a 447 cam in the Street Glide CVO or just leave it as is? Um, it's a debate, guys. Um, and I know there's a lot of different cams out there. Um, and I would, I wish you guys uh, do leave some comments down below and let me know what you think. Um, did I go the wrong way by just staying with Screaming Eagle? Um, what's your guys' experience with some of the others? The 475 from SNS, the 468, I think, from Woods. Uh, their zippers performance has lots. There, there's so many different options out there. Let me know what you guys did with your bike if you have put a cam on it. And if you haven't yet and you're considering that, um, you know, hope you got some value out of this. Um, this was a learning experience for me. Um, I actually met with the master tech that was going to work on this bike and talk through all of this with him before I decided to do what I did. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I put the cam plate, I put the high flow oil pump in there. I put new tappets. Um, you have to use the, the, the adjustable push rods. Um, you don't have to, but uh, most people do. And that comes in a kit from Screaming Eagle. So I probably overdid it, but what that allows me to do is if I want to go to a stage three or go all the way up to a 131 stage four on the road glide, all of the, that is in there. The only thing they would have to change out if I went to a 131, I think is the cam. I think it's a five something cam, a Screaming Eagle. Um, but that, that cam plate, that oil pump, uh, those tappets would all be set. So I have a lot of the, the workings there. And then they could, again, still tune it with the Screaming Eagle tuner, keep my warranty. Um, and, but to me, honestly, I look at the horsepower numbers and the torque numbers that you get from a stage two. You get a big jump when you go to stage three. Honestly, I don't know that it's worth it. And it also makes me think, when you're trying to decide between a 107, a 114, or a 117, um, and you're not maybe necessarily thinking about going to a CVO uh, for all of the other reasons that you go to a CVO, um, I think I'd stick with the 114 and put a cam in it. And I know there's more aggressive cams in there, so you can get, I know you can get more horsepower, more torque from some of those other cams. 
uh, from other companies and a different tune. Um, I stayed with the Screaming Eagle EPA tune, so I I'm not getting max performance out of this. Even with the, the Torque Cam, the Screaming Eagle Torque Cam, if I used a different tuner and got it dynoed, I know I could get better numbers out of it, but for me, this is enough. I don't need any more than that. It's reliable. It's warrantied by Harley Davidson and my dealership, the labor that they did on it. So it makes me feel more comfortable. So guys, if you found value in this uh, video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, also share this with your friends. If you know someone else who's considering changing out a cam or deciding which way to go with the cam or not, a 114 or a 117, put a cam in. I'm um, sure this and maybe they'll get something out of this as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. And when you do subscribe, if you're a new subscriber, I'd really appreciate it if you let a put a comment down there and say, hey, I subscribe so I can reach out and thank you for supporting the channel because I do that. Everyone who subscribes and lets me know, I say thank you for subscribing because I really do appreciate all the subscribers and the viewers as well. Um, and with that, guys, I want to leave you with this thought. Life is short. Get out and ride the bike. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye now.